Over the years, I built up quite the collection of physics books. These are just some of them through my undergraduate and my PhD in physics. So in this video, I'm going to be recommending 10 books in two categories for those of you who are interested in studying physics or for those of you who are looking for a present for an aspiring physicist. Those two categories are books which introduce concepts in maths and science in a kind of general way, popular science books, if you like, and then also textbooks which you might want to buy to get ahead of the game and read before you go to university and also do exercises in and then also use as a reference during the beginning of your course. All the books I talk about will have links to their Amazon pages down there in the description and I'd also recommend that you check out the comments section where I'm sure that everyone is posting their favourite physics books too. To kick things off I'm going to recommend five popular science books starting with an absolute classic Six Easy Pieces by Richard Feynman. So Feynman wrote quite a few famous physics books. This was the first one that I read, and I also think it's the most appropriate as an introduction both to Feynman and to physics in general. So this book is formed of chapters taken from his Lectures in Physics series, which is famous amongst physicists for being really, really good. And it offers an introduction to areas of physics like classical gravitation, a little bit of quantum mechanics, where physics sits in relation to other sciences, and generally it's just a really good introduction to the field. And it's for that reason uh, that I was given this about 10 years ago at a summer school at the University of Oxford. Um, and that's why this copy is particularly battered, because I took this everywhere with me when I was in sixth form. This thing is really concise, it made a big influence on me, like it definitely spurred me on to do physics at uni. I was pretty set by that point, but this was like, yeah, this, but there was a particular moment in this actually to do with the uncertainty principle right at the end of the quantum mechanics section uh, when I was, I, I read something and I had to tell everyone else about it. So I, I, I really can't recommend this one enough. This is an excellent popular science book. And then a follow-up recommendation like the sequel, if you like, Six Not-So-Easy Pieces, which is about relativity, which is a subject that isn't covered in Six Easy Pieces because it, it's not so easy. This also draws on Feynman's lecture series, but this time talking about special and general relativity. These are done in like a depth that's not quite the same as a physics degree, but still definitely more advanced than six easy pieces. So I'd recommend this to someone maybe who was in high school who was particularly advanced or someone who's starting out a degree. Now this next book isn't about physics, it's actually about maths. It's Alex's Adventures in Numberland by Alex Bellos. The reason I'm recommending this book is because so much of physics is really maths. A physics degree is basically a maths degree with applications. And if you don't enjoy maths, then you are kind of at a disadvantage when studying physics. I'm saying that as somebody who didn't enjoy studying maths until, very literally until I read this book. This book changed the way I thought about maths. It made it seem so much less intimidating. It made it seem fun. It actually made me interested. And it was like a step change. It was before I read this, I just really didn't enjoy it that much. After this, I have found physics easier. I have found working with the maths in my degrees so much easier. So. I, I, I honestly, this is the, one of the books I recommend to everyone. This, this is one that I genuinely think anybody studying physics who, like me, wasn't particularly keen on the maths part of it, everybody like that should read this book. Next, a lighter book, but one covering a broad range of modern physics through the lens of science fiction. The Physics of the Impossible by Michio Kaku. I first read this book relatively recently. Um, I actually reviewed it on my Goodreads. And to be honest, I wasn't expecting very much from it. I've read a lot of physics books that I, I'm at a relatively advanced level in physics myself now. So I wasn't expecting there to be anything new in it. But I did learn a few things and I thought the presentation of it was really uh, engaging. It's very American, take from that what you will. but. It's a really interesting way of getting these concepts across, particularly seeing as so many people who are interested in physics are obviously kind of sci-fi nerds, I'm one of them. Using kind of sci-fi um, tropes and background, like for example Star Trek, Star Wars, um, it's a great way of getting these relatively high level ideas to a younger audience. So this one I think is a really good idea for a present for somebody who's a little bit younger, maybe kind of um, sort of 14 to 18 kind of range, but I read it as a PhD student and I enjoyed it. So generally I think this one would be good as a, as a present. 
Then to round out the popular science books, we've already had one about relativity, so this one is going to be about the other massive pillar of 20th century physics, Quantum by Manjit Kumar. Now, I'll be honest with you, I don't know if I have found THE book on quantum mechanics. I don't think one exists, really. Of the ones I've read, this is the closest to being THE book. Um, and I think the reason for that is this introduces quantum mechanics in a historical way. So what I mean by that is it starts with Max Planck and his reluctant revolution at the turn of the century, and then builds up what happened in the field layer by layer, chronologically. Now, that's just the way my brain works. I found that to be the best way to get the ideas into my head. I could sort of situate them that way. If you are more interested in learning things kind of in a conceptual way, then I might recommend uh, In Search of Schrodinger's Cat by John Gribbin, or alternatively The Elegant Universe by Brian Greene, though that one is really about string theory rather than quantum mechanics, but it necessarily introduces a lot of quantum stuff too. So this is really a matter of personal preference. I will definitely say that this is well written, it is well researched, it's very interesting, and it kind of it struck my resonant frequency of learning, if you like. So if, if you, like me, maybe would learn things best in a chronological way, I'd recommend this. If not, check the description for the links to those other two books. Now, before moving on to the textbooks, if you are interested in learning how to study physics, then I just made a video on that very subject with the lovely people at Socratica. So in that video, I talk about my experiences studying physics, how I got into it, how I arrived at my PhD field of atmospheric physics, a bit about maths that I used, a bit about programming that I used, and then also a little bit about books. So if that sounds interesting to you, then definitely check it out. There'll be a card on the screen and there's also a link in the description. Next up though, I'm going to recommend you four textbooks and then also a bonus book, which is kind of halfway between the two categories. First, the single best, most influential math textbook I've ever used, Mathematical Methods for Physics and Engineering by Riley, Hobson and Bentz. This meaty thing was the bible of maths during both of my degrees, and it's quite telling actually that this is the only maths textbook I own, because in it I have all the maths that are used in my Oxford physics degree. So that's everything from high school level maths to integral equations, tensors, PDEs, basically if it's not a graduate level, you name it, it's in this book. The best part about it is that there are loads and loads of exercises at the end of each chapter, with the solutions to half of them at the end of this book, and then you can buy the other half, the solutions to the other half, in a separate volume. That's just how many questions there are. And of course, doing those questions is the best way to learn a new topic. So, I mean, for that reason alone, if you're going to buy one math textbook to support a physics degree, or to get ahead before a physics degree, it's, it's got to be this one. Next up, a broad introductory physics textbook, Fundamentals of Physics by Halliday, Resnick and Walker. This was a textbook which I used a fair bit in my first year studying physics, and I don't actually own a copy because of that, because my college library in Oxford had enough copies that everyone could have their own, so I don't own it. But I probably wouldn't have used it too much past first, maybe second year. It's quite an introductory, quite broad but shallow textbook about pretty much all the areas that you'd expect to cover in a physics degree, but you wouldn't want to just rely on it. It's certainly well made, like it's well presented, great figures, um, I just remember it being particularly like kind of pleasant to, to work with, but not the most detailed book. So perhaps this would be great for somebody who is in high school, like A level or IB, and they're not challenged enough by the course, they maybe want to take it a little bit further. So this would be a, a good way to bridge the gap between high school level and university level physics. But like I say, I personally found it a little bit shallow. Third, and flipping back to maths, a book which I've not used extensively myself, but everybody seems to have read it and loved it, and so I basically feel obliged to pay this forward. Grad Div Curl and All That by H. M. Shea. Now, there is a reason why I am recommending this textbook, despite not having used it very much myself, and that's because this is a textbook about vector calculus. So grad, div, and curl are the three operations, the key operations in vector calculus. And it's a subject which is super, super important in physics. Like, particularly in my field, atmospheric physics, use it all the time. But it's not terribly well treated in the literature. 
you don't learn it in high school and it's kind of thrust on you at university level. So I'm recommending this because I think it's an important mathematical thing to add to your toolkit. And this is apparently, it was recommended by Oxford University. Fortunately, I didn't need to act on that recommendation because for some reason it just clicked, which never happens with me. But this is the book that I would recommend to, um, if you want to focus in on like one mathematical technique to leapfrog your game before you go to uni, or if you're at uni and you are struggling with vector calculus, Grad Div Curl and all that would be an excellent place to start. And then lastly, another physics textbook, and in my opinion, an underrated gem, Concepts in Thermal Physics by Blundell and Blundell. Now I had the distinct pleasure and privilege to be lectured by both Blundell and Blundell, they were a husband and wife team, and this book is based on one of their uh, lecture courses on thermodynamics and statistical mechanics. And it's quite a condensed textbook, but it's super easy to read. It covers a key area in physics, a bit similar to Grad Div and Curl. This is uh, an area of physics that if you wanted to get ahead in the game, thermodynamics is a fantastic way to do that. That's, that's a really useful subject area. And this particular textbook isn't that intimidating because it's quite small. It covers the same material, but what it also does is harking back to what I said about quantum, it introduces a historical context to the uh, concepts because thermodynamics is relatively dry. Um, and what it does is at the end of every chapter, include a biography of a key player like James Clerk Maxwell or Carnot or Boltzmann. Um, and for me, that added a lot of interest. Um, it helps that the rest of the textbook is really, really well written and engaging and I just found super easy to learn from. But the biographies really added something extra. So definitely recommend this as a textbook for thermodynamics if you're taking that course, or if you are someone who wants to get ahead for a physics degree, this is really, more people should read it. So that's the textbooks. We've already had the popular science books, so that just leaves us with the bonus book, which doesn't fit neatly into either of those categories. And that book is The Visual Display of Quantitative Information by Edward Tufte. So this book was given to me at the very start of my PhD, in the very first week, by my supervisor. And I had trouble categorising it because it, it kind of is a textbook. Specifically, it's a textbook about how to make good figures. And it's the kind of thing that you might refer to in a course on, I don't know, graphic design, but it's not something that you'd use in a physics degree. So it's something that I read as a popular science book. It was something to supplement my learning. And I can definitely say without a doubt that this book made me a better scientist. This book made me think for the first time really about how I was putting together my figures. And it provides you with a bunch of rules that or kind of guidelines that you should follow in putting together a figure and also things that you should avoid doing. So it's a genuinely practical book and it also provides you with lots of examples of where things go right and where things go wrong. And that is a key part of being a scientist. When you have to present your work, no one's gonna wanna look at it if it's just hard to read or ugly. My supervisor gave me this book because he thought that everybody starting a PhD should read it and use its ideas in making their thesis. I did, I got some great feedback on my thesis and people saying that it was very easy to read. I definitely agree with him. I think this is an important book to read if you are thinking of becoming a scientist or if you're, I suppose, just interested in graphic design. But definitely another underrated book that scientists should be reading. To repeat what I said at the start of the video, there will be links to the Amazon pages for all of these books in the description. So if you found any of them interesting, definitely check them out. And I'd also recommend that if I missed your favorite physics book, then put that down in the comments below. Of course, if you enjoyed the video, do give it a like, share the video if you think other people should see it. And also, if you'd like to hear about how I think about learning physics, then definitely check out the video I made with Socratica. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.